Hi, I'm Carl Taylor, advertising and product photographer, and today I'm testing the new Hasselblad X2D on a product shoot to see how it performs. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Use coupon code CARL to get a 10% discount. So at the moment, I'm just testing a couple of ideas with these acrylic rods and either one handbag or two handbags. And I'm just using the X2D through the electronic viewfinder and the screen on the back. Great new auto focusing system, so it's super fast, super sharp, and you can move the focus points around. And I'm just getting a feel for the look of the shot just under this general broad house lighting at the moment, so this isn't how it's going to be lit. Um, but the good thing is the camera's lovely and ergonomic, compact, feels nice. It's 100 megapixels, which is going to give me great detail. So at this stage, it's just sort of getting some ideas, figuring a few things out. And then once I've started to get really where I want to go, I'll um, start to glue these acrylic rods where I need them. They're currently just held down with uh, blue tack. Uh, and then we'll start to fix things in position and then move on to the lighting. I'm really liking this um, high resolution preview screen because even though I'm just shooting under the house lights, I'm able just to get a really good instant idea of my composition um, without even tethering at the moment. So um, it's just a nice quick way to uh, to work right now. And I don't even have to worry about a memory card because I'm shooting to the uh, nearly one terabyte solid state drive that's built into the camera. That's it. And then we're gonna dab it on that cross point underneath here. That's it. Now this is also really useful for composition because I've actually got a live view image obviously on the back of the display screen here so I can fine tune my composition live as if it was live view with that live image that's on the screen. Now that's good as well. You see, I was able to completely clear the screen of data or more data or less data. So now I've just got my mobile focus point that I can move around and a completely blank screen to assist me in my composition live, which is really, really nice. The good thing as well is playing around with it on the back of the screen, I'm able to pinch zoom on the screen to see what it would look like slightly cropped. And then I can slide the image around as well, right on the back of the screen. So it's just nice to be able to say, right, okay, what if we just were a little bit cropped in on that image? What's it going to look like? So there's quite a lot of benefits, even in a studio environment, completely different to my normal working process because normally I'd be just doing every single shot tethered into focus, which you can do with this camera and you can also wirelessly tether. But it's interesting because even at this early stage, I'm getting a really good preview on what I'm going to accomplish in this shot. Okay, so you can now see that I'm tethered into focus software from the camera. That obviously gives me a higher quality, larger view, uh, which is perfect now because now I'm going to start the lighting process. That isn't the correctly lit shot, that's just under the house lights, but now I can really fine tune, start building my lighting up to finalize um, the image.
can see now, I can't see the image on screen anymore because exposure simulation is still on and obviously we've turned all the house lights off, dropped down to 100 ISO, but now I'm using a flash trigger um, to trigger flash. Go into the menu, into exposure, and go to exposure simulation, which you can see currently was also set for manual mode, which is the mode I'm working in, but I'm gonna turn that off now so it isn't affected by manual mode, and now exposure simulation is off which means I can now see the image again, even in this lower light conditions. Oh, this is cool. Check this out. So now I've switched to manual focus on my lens, and that allows me to move my focus point to wherever I want in the image. And then by turning the lens manually focused, it actually is a focus assist there, that you can see highlights in green when I've hit the focus point correctly. But then if I want to select a new focus point, I can just slide it over to a new position, refocus the lens manually, and focus for that particular position. Okay, we're gonna change it for a harder light now. Right, okay, so let's try 35-60 next. So what I've done is I've just used a 35 by 60 at the moment, which is a smallish size light. I've tested the larger 3120 and a smaller light, trying to find the right balance for the shadows from the acrylic tubes and the uh, refraction through the tubes and the gloss lighting on the tubes and um, where it is now I think is a better starting point but it's still far too hard and harsh and there's still work to be done on the chrome work on the bags that needs to get some nice softer gradient lighting in and the general fill lighting so I think what I'm going to do now is apply a little bit of fill lighting off of the ceiling with a second light to um, lift the shot a little bit. So this is a combination now of the first light but with a little bit of fill light so we can see from the previous shot the shadows are a bit darker. I just recomposed there so there's a bit of a change in the position but you can see the fill light that's starting to come into there. So the thing that's dead in here at the moment is the top cap of the top locking part of the pink bag and the clasp on the side, the carabiner and its front strap. If we take a laser from camera position, show me where that laser beam is, please, Emma. I want to know where that is ending up, right where your hand is, yeah? All right. So what that's telling me, based on angles of reflectance and angles of incidence, is that the light, if I want light to hit into this part of this chrome work here, that light has to come from here. Now I want that light to be a gradient, I don't want it to be a big homogeneous light source. I want that to be more of a gradient of light across that chrome work. So the most obvious thing would be to put a scrim here and put a light through the scrim or put a large white panel here and bounce light into the white panel. I think I'm going to start with a white panel first of all and put a ball of light on it. In closer so the gradient increases stop there let's have a look at that yeah that's nice right we're going to live with that for a minute so really lovely result there that shot 320 so you can see now that beautiful detail in that gradient on that metal work beautiful detail captured with the 100 megapixel sensor here um, fantastically sharp so it's this next buckle on the side so i need um, a, a a medium sized piece of white card onto the ground. Yeah, right, now. Now what we need is for the logo of the bag, you know that Fresnel we had? Fire it into where the bag shadow is on the floor. Quite nice. 
nice, nice little pocket of light there. Harder shadow, the logos that up quite well. That gives that quite a lot of three dimensionality on that bag. I think we're going to need to hit that other bag with something as well. Don't want to see where I'm going to put light on the ceiling. That's it. Right, so just, just above here. There we go, right, that's catching that triangle really nicely now. So I'm quite happy with how that's coming together. So our next light was the um, Pico light that we were going to use. There you go. Yeah, that's a good spot for it. Now what's really good about this, I've noticed, is that while I've been tethered, the battery has actually increased in power. So it's charging the battery, and that's not something that I was getting when I was using my H6. The battery would eventually drain on the H6, so I'd have to switch battery. But with the tethered cable into my laptop, it's actually giving the battery a boost. I think we're gonna need the light on the strap at the front now. Right, let's give that a whirl. Put the modelling lights back on, please. Well, actually, it doesn't really matter. I can still take the shot like that without for a second. So we've got the light on the strap at the front now, which is good. This corner here is a bit dark to here. So I just want a white polyboard held somewhere over there. Let's see what we've got in terms of lighting. Yep, yeah, that's fine. That's lit, that's lit, that's got a bit, and that's maybe a fraction dark, but we'll pull that up after. Okay, right, we're gonna just start playing around with ratios a tiny bit now. Right, so I'm very happy with that, um, all the things we've spoken about so far. Now, at the moment, the camera is at F13 and the depth of field isn't quite enough for both handbags at F13. It's not far off when I selected a focus area just in here, but if I want it to be critically sharp all the way through, I'm going to need to focus stack it. And probably the sweet spot of the lens in terms of its optimum optical quality will be at about F11. So I'm actually going to switch to F11 and reduce the lights uh, in power accordingly and then I'm going to run my focus stack at f11 to get the absolute, absolute maximum critical sharpness and crispness out of this image all the way through with a series of focus stacks. I also tested the X2D against my H6 100 megapixel to look for problems with diffraction and overall image quality. You can see the results of those tests in our main X2D review video. Well, that was uh, quite interesting. I'm very surprised uh, how user-friendly it was for a studio environment. So the ability to shoot, use the screen on the back, use the EVF nice and clear, Really impressed with the focusing compared to, you know, my other Hasselblad H6. The focusing is super fast, super easy with the touch sensitive focus points. And, you know, shooting with it tethered was, uh, was a joy as well. So um, overall, um, as a studio camera, this has a lot of promise. And I think realistically, ergonomically as well for portraits, beauty and fashion in a studio, this is going to be a lot more comfortable to use. The image quality also looks superb.